Well, welcome to another post-tweet jam, so collab talk tweet jam discussion, and I've got a great topic today where we're going to be talking about uh, are your customers still asking which tool and when, uh, which is a popular question for the Microsoft 365 platform. And joining me today is Martina Grom, the CEO of At Work and a Microsoft Regional Director and dual MVP in Office Apps and Services as well as Azure. Congratulations on that. Uh, there's a lot of content to maintain that, that the dual MVP status. So props to you for that. Yeah, and, and thanks for the invitation, Christian. It's it's like, um, it's a lot of content to maintain, but if you like the content you need to maintain, it's much easier to process it, but it's huge, right. especially Azure. And I'm, I'm more specialized in Azure security right now. So it's not the whole EIS part and so on. So it's all around security, but this is a lot. But I still, I, I love the technology and I love to learn new things. Well, that's great. And a little bit about your company and what you guys do and focus on. Yeah, at work is located in Austria, in Vienna, and we are focusing on cloud solutions around Microsoft Azure, around Microsoft 365. We do a lot of governance, consulting services, and so on. And we also develop our own products like Delegate 365 or um, governance toolkits and so on. So, so it's kind of a split um, company. One part is more in the product product side and the other one is more on the consulting and strategy side. Well, I know that this topic, again, gets to the heart of what your company does and your expertise. And we both mm. go way back as SharePoint MVPs and we, you know, mm. we, we are you know, Yammer fans and Microsoft Teams, of course. So kind of all of those in one drive, you can't forget that mm -hmm. within the workloads. But so let's kind of dive in. So this is seven questions. Love mm -hmm. to get your opinion on all these. So question number one, we started out saying, in your view, which features and tools are driving the most growth and adoption of the Microsoft 365 platform and why? So currently, and due to the pandemic in 2020, it's, in my opinion, it's Microsoft Teams because people needed the tool to collaborate and to communicate on a day-to-day -day basis. And Microsoft Teams is a perfect tool set if you have that and if you work in the Microsoft universe. If you are on another planet or universe, you probably walked away with other tools. But I see a lot of adoption around Microsoft Teams and I see also that my customers are really thankful for having tools like that to stay connected. I, you know, what's interesting is that we saw a lot, again, with the SharePoint yeah. history, you know, organizations would go in and build these complex tool sets and platforms where they're trying to bundle features yeah. together and capabilities and, and link to line of business applications and all that capability. And a lot of that work, look, there's still that, those efforts yeah. that are still underway, but so much of that is gone now that you have this out of the box service of Microsoft Teams which does allow you to surface all of those other tools and, and solutions, especially mm -hmm. if you're, you know, organizations from a governance standpoint that struggle with shadow IT of people using these third party tools and things that are out mm -hmm. there, they can relax a lot of those restrictions, not to say they shouldn't go and try and consolidate and clean up and align with the business. Like these are our standard solutions. But if there's a business unit that has a specialized need for a third party project management tool that's specific to the customers that are working with, they can do that and surface that as a tab within Microsoft Teams. That's kind of a new thing. And there's not a development effort needed to go and integrate that into the SharePoint intranet, which was kind of the historical path. Yeah, it was it was like um, customers uh, still looking at the one solution which fits all. And there are many tools who try that, but you see, you you need kind of an integrated solution, but also people get it to to use more tools on the day to day basis. Yeah. Well, something else I, I commented on, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. One of the other questions too, but you know, Yammer growth is happening again, which is exciting to see. It's and it's funny, you know, uh, people that are within the the SharePoint community. I mean, there are a lot of haters out there on, on Yammer. And I was a, a Yammer fan and user prior mm -hmm. to Microsoft acquiring the, the platform. But I think 
recognizing the frustration was the lack of integration. Microsoft acquired the company, made a bunch of promises, and then didn't deliver. And it's mm. it's standalone. And so that's mm. a lot of, I, I think a lot of where the, you know, which tool do I use and when do I use it happened because mm. I think that really was created after the Yammer acquisition. Well, where should I do this now? Yeah, and, and also um, it's like if, if you're not deep into the specific services, you do not know the differences. And it's from your perspective, it's probably, oh, it's just another tool who does the same like all other tools. So right. why should I use that? And this is also something which need to be explained a little bit better from our perspective and to bring use cases to customers. And that's it. We're, we're going to dive into that and some of the other questions. Uh, so let's see. Question number two. So are your customers or your organization still asking which Microsoft 365 tools to use and when? So are you hearing that question or a version of that question with yeah. customers? Yeah, I'm, I'm still hearing that question. And I think it's still um, a legitimate, legitimate question because it's like when you start or if, if you start your Microsoft 365 journey, you probably don't want to use all tools from the beginning on because you need to learn about that. You said, okay, I'm switching my mail services. I'm switching SharePoint. I'm moving into Teams. So probably Yammer might be too much in the beginning, but might be relevant a little bit later. So it's, it's like it really depends on the maturity of the company. And I see a lot of talks about that. Also, um, for instance, now we have a new webinar feature within Microsoft Teams. And now I got the questions, what should I use now? Is it a meeting? Is it a live event? Or is it a webinar? I don't know. And this is kind of the explanation users need to get and answers that they see, okay, what am I using for which use case I have in my organization. Well, it's, I think guidance for any IT organization, any company, when you have questions like that, rather than get frustrated, like, why do we keep hearing about this? And we use SharePoint or we use Teams this way, whatever it is, you know, it, there's obviously a gap in mm. the education process and the training of end users. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you, you have some missing scenarios to fill some gaps. And so it's a you lo should look at it as kind of the Microsoft speak here as as a as an opportunity to go and yeah. review and yeah. say okay what what are we missing here is it because a lot of times let's say it's just uh, it, it's it's fair to say that it's an end user education opportunity yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's less so where there's a gap in the technology it's more of let me yeah. help you understand this is how they're they're used yeah. Uh, and instead of just saying, well, which is the right tool to use when, say, well, yeah. here, understand different scenarios for this and use the one that is most appropriate and fits with the, the intended goal. Yeah. And also what I think it's really important is that people have a choice to use those tools they like and they love. And this is also if, if Microsoft would give only the one and only tool and name it, this is Microsoft 365, do whatever you want with that. Um, it would be not enough for the people because they said, yeah, but I want this and that, and I want the pink one and the blue one and the yellow one. So, and it's like in private life on your private device, you are using different apps for different scenarios and it's, it's the same. Right. Well, that's, that's a great way to to put it as well. It's like you think about when people that if they are validly asking that question, you know, which tool and confused, I don't understand with all the tools that are out there, and just be say like, well, look at what's on your phone. Yeah, you know, exactly. That, so I this have, is what I do. <laughs> I have like five or six chat tools. Why yeah. do I have that? Because different constituencies. When I'm talking with my family members, when I'm talking with community members, when I'm talking with like I'm on Clubhouse. And there's yeah. people that are not part of the Microsoft 365 community that are largely out on there. It's other constituencies, different tools for different use. And I know which ones to use when. Yeah. If I'm going to go share a message about a family activity happening this weekend, I'm yeah. not going to go out to Twitter. Yeah. 
you know. And, so. and it's the same. And it's also in my history, I always looked at other tools. I needed to learn about Google Apps. I needed to learn about Zoom. What are they doing better? Why are people loving that? Otherwise, you are stuck in a little house, which is probably called Microsoft, but there's a whole planet out there. Yep, exactly. Well, let's uh, jump in. So we've got three more focused questions here. So question three, is Microsoft Teams changing the way that your customers, or your organization collaborate? Has it become your hub for teamwork? Um, that's a clear answer and it's yes, because we are all spending the last month at home working on a screen, talking to a screen, collaborating on a screen. And team was incredibly helpful to keep us connected, kind of. And, and also to support us in our day-to-day -day work. So it's like, so the, the most used collaboration tool is still Outlook and email. Yeah. But um, the whole communication part, like instant communication or an instant chat or a call or seeing other people is delivered through Teams. And this is why it's important for organizations. Well, one thing too, is that when you think of Again, SharePoint as an intranet and being that kind of hub prior to, to Teams and building out to add all these features in and and really kind of it was you know SharePoint as that uh, uh, that Swiss Army knife idea that you could make it whatever you want it to be and so it got stretched in every different direction and didn't do that great of a job in most of those directions. Great at the core capabilities uh, and so Teams like when I launched my own company you know from day one which was that January, so four years ago, was when Teams was launched. Mm. Started using Teams day one. With two or more people, we found productivity in that. As the features were added and it did more and more, like we did more and more, we found chat, yes, but meetings like this, doing something and, and, and then hitting record and getting the transcripts and automatically making that part of our information records. It, it just became part of the way that we worked and so exactly. it was great great to have that capability it, it's uh and for uh, and maybe that's a key difference uh is sharepoint versus teams where sharepoint has largely been more of a mid to enterprise size mm -hmm. company solution mm -hmm. and small to medium businesses were kind of left out saying it was too expensive or too much of an it overhead to maintain that and used all these other third-party solutions. Now teams can solve that need for mm -hmm. a two, three-person organization as well as a you know two hundred thousand-person organization. Yeah, it's true. And also, it's it's like the same if you compare it with Outlook or Exchange. Outlook can do a lot of things. It can do project management, delivering emails, manage your calendar, and so on. But it's probably not. It, it can't do everything very well. You can do everything with it as you can do everything with SharePoint, but there is a missing piece. Right. Well, and and I think that's too, the, the, the which tool to use when, like probably the most frustrating answer to that question for customers, for end users is, well, it depends. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really should be the beginning of a conversation of what are you trying to accomplish uh, mm. and, and so the answer will be different. I mean, what's a best practice for my organization may not be a, a best practice for yours, which neither of ours will be a best practice for this massive enterprise. Mm. And so but we have options. And there are some organizations that the culture of collaboration, like I, I, I assume that you know, given your team's background and focus and, 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 and our focus around collaboration technology, we're collaboration centric. Other organizations are very email centric. Mm -hmm. Others are very portal workflow, you know, centric, and, you know, and so mm -hmm. they can they can have you know heavier heavier usage of that capability of each of those capabilities, but still interact with those other business units that have a different collaboration culture, and it still work. Exactly. And Teams provides a good baseline for all of that core capabilities into it, each of those. It, it does, and and also. Microsoft did a pretty good job last year because they they delivered very fast, they scaled, and they really supported a lot of organizations. So. Well, 
and you brought up the example of the, the like the webinar type, the features, the cable, yeah. some of that, which are still coming. But a lot of that was a reaction where I, I think at the beginning of last year, they kept saying it's like, well, that's not what this, our technology is. It's not meant to be a webinar. And like all of us at the community said, well, it should, yeah. <laughs> you should think about that and add yeah. those features. So yeah. we're not having to go and pay those other third part, the th third party uh, fees and services. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, question four is, while SharePoint remains the top solution for intranets, has its role evolved with your customers and organization? So for me, yes, because SharePoint delivers a lot of things. And if I talk about Share SharePoint, I always mean OneDrive as well. Mm. Um, because it's part of, of the SharePoint universe for me, and I see... Um, SharePoint supports people working from everywhere. If they are working file-centric, they have their documents with them, they can work from everywhere and so on. And then you have another part like intranets or the collaboration part where you see I have a, uh, we work together on a project, we need to collaborate on a team site in SharePoint and so on. And now with the new colors like Microsoft Viva and the whole integration in there, people really like that. They said, oh, Martina, can we talk about the new intranet because we are planning something? And it, it looks very promising what Microsoft delivered through Viva and we have a whole integration part and people really like that a lot currently. Well, it, I think Viva is starting to, I, mean, I know that's a much bigger topic, starting to deliver on that promise of, okay, you've got all this data, it's all in there. Yeah. And you're, now now you even have more ad hoc collaboration and uh, you know, in transactional data that's coming through all the interactions via Teams, your documents in, in SharePoint, I mean, all of that stuff, all of your files, how do we start leveraging that? How do we start tapping into that knowledge and surfacing data so it's not just about search but automated ways that you can better leverage yeah. this capability and do it in a way that is mindful of you know that like meeting burnout is a real thing um yeah. screen fatigue in general and delivering data that is more thoughtful of the way that we work and our individual yeah. organizational needs so yeah, yeah. definitely well, it's, you know, if you talk about Microsoft Teams or OneDrive, I mean, SharePoint is under the hood uh, yeah. for, for both those solutions. So, but is there, there is there less of a need to talk about to know about SharePoint? Yeah, um, so I'm a person who really wants to understand what what is below everything. So I was always interested in uh, Teams architecture as well as Microsoft Groups architecture. And I really tried to explain that, what that they understand. They are not using only Teams because there is an exchange part which comes with it and there's a big SharePoint part which comes with it. And this is a challenge because people see only the product name and says there's Teams and it does everything. Um, and it's much easier if they understand what what's behind that. And if SharePoint is used as a document repository only or supporting search, or if I, I have a calendar functionality, I need to understand that this is probably a hidden exchange mailbox because I haven't moved my mailboxes for whatever reason. And this is really helpful for customers if you understand that. And if you look behind that, then it's much easier to build a governance because you see that the things are connected and not separated anymore. There was, you know, the first two years after Team was uh, was released, there was an architectural di diagram, yeah. very high level, um, that, that showed that, that split, the d division between that. And where yeah. some of like the compliance and, and yeah. other uh, rules engines kind of hit across both of those things. But, you know, I used to share that all the time. Yeah. Just because a top level to explain, Teams is the like it, up on top is the display portion of that. Documents, yeah. SharePoint, meetings, chat, exchange through that. Yeah. So your yeah. so your governance tools that you're using today and have been for years for SharePoint or for Exchange still valid, still doing yeah. all that that work behind it. 
And and obviously things are evolved and there's updates and there's new features and capabilities, but the core is all still the same. That architecture, that basic architecture is still the same. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I think we need to dig that thing up again. But but Make also if you talk about previously it was all around SharePoint governance, but if you talk about Microsoft Teams, you need to talk about Microsoft 365 governance. Yes. And look at the whole picture. Well, that always had gaps. Stream your video content. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there was there were, uh, what was missing from all of those SharePoint governance discussions were all of the instant messages, all the chats. I mean, with with Skype. An exchange. Right. Exchange. <laughs> right. It, and and the fact that they're in context are information yeah. assets that need to be protected, that need to be yep. backed up and restorable, that need to yep. be auditable. Uh, I, yep. I need to be able to go in and do an e-discovery and pull the conversation that we had yep. in yep. instant message, the chat, in relation to that document, which is being hold, held. Yeah. Yeah. Little details. I know. Little. <laughs> yeah. G governance is a full-time job. I know. It is. All right, well, question five, with Yammer growth again on the rise, which business scenarios are driving this growth? So what I see a lot, so for every organization, Yammer brings a big social part into an organization, and this part is currently missing, so that people can just connect without the organizational and without their projects and the colleagues that work on a day-to-day -day basis, that they can just reach out to other people in the organization or just talk about other things. So this is one of the use cases I see a lot that people need the communication channel as well. And another use case which uh, was very popular last year was a management came and said, um, I need to do an event where everyone in the organization can hear and listen to me. Mm -hmm. And this is done through a town hall event in Yama, and this is also very popular. Or I need to reach every person in the organization, and I do not want to send an email to everyone. So these are the kind of use cases which are really helpful with Yama, and it delivered very well here. Right. Well. And the other one too is that you know, and I know that you know Microsoft with the Yammer acquisition years ago pulled back from the social tools mm -hmm. within SharePoint itself. But sometimes uh, you know Teams, which is more project specific, um, and I know that there are all company teams. I don't want to get into. The, I'm not a fan of all company teams. I I usually mute them and stay away from them. But we're also my company. You know, at Point we use Yammer and mm -hmm. it works as designed as a place mm -hmm. where you can go and ask broad questions and you don't know yeah. where the expertise, yeah. where the input comes from. Yeah. I would always use the example of, uh, cause this has happened to me so many times, uh, but I would join a new company. I'd have a role, a focus of, for my, that job. And people were oblivious to what my prior history was. I remember, you know, I, I've been told at different roles, like, well, that's not your job. I'm like, yeah, but I did that for five years in this mm. other role with this other company. I have specific experience in that area. Why would you discount my voice? Mm. You know, because my it doesn't fit my current job description. That makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, if you don't have the way to surface that kind of discussion, mm. And, and reach out to it. I mean, I go back to one of my favorite examples of Yammer, the power of Yammer, was back with the nationwide insurance example at the mm -hmm. SharePoint conference years back. I think it was the one in Los Angeles in 2012. Is that right? Some anyway, back in back there, eight mm -hmm. nine years ago, uh, or whenever that was. Um, and uh, the the example was used where. Uh, uh, someone who was a relatively new employee in support was, you know, found something, was trying to get feedback. Like, I, this is a recurring issue, whatever it was. This is a recurring mm -hmm. issue. What's our best practice? What should we do in this scenario? Mm -hmm. And I uh, says, I think, you know, this might be a path, no feedback. And then the CEO saw that message, responded to it, and then dozens of people that get went in, commented, and started really expanding on the idea and ended up solving a big problem with mm. support for customers. And this support person like won an award because of uh, raising mm. this issue. But again, it speaks to, you know, the power of 
this broad, like let the world see, you know, in your organization see and have access to this information and then share ideas. And you don't know where that good idea is going to come from. Yeah. yeah. And and also Yammer is a, is a great ideation tool. And also Yammer doesn't know any hierarchies and no barriers. So, and it's not, if, if you can't speak up, if it's not fitting your current job role, there's probably... Um, your experience is valuable to everyone. And if you have an idea to a specific topic, you should share it because it's knowledge you're sharing. And right. sharing knowledge is very important that people just have that knowledge and they can gain benefits from it. Well, the best ideas in the world are rarely that lone wolf, have this great idea, execute yeah. on it, solves all these problems. The best ideas tend to be iterative collaborative yep. activities yeah i have like a, a root of an idea you add on to it we test something we try it out somebody else comes in and says we tried that this is where we failed but you know here's another idea yep. to take a different direction and at the end of that it's like the uh i just you know uh, did a uh, mvp uh uh video last week uh, and the example was used at the bit, the, the Beatles, you know, played together for a decade before they were an overnight success, mm -hmm. you know, and, and on average, there's another quote, can't remember who made the quote that said like every overnight ex success takes like 20 years, you know, <laughs> to have that overnight success, but, uh, same with ideas uh, and yeah. right. It's, it's capturing that those information assets, pulling yeah. that knowledge out of people's brains and putting yeah. out a place where it could be consumed and action yeah. taken. And and also in our organization, because we started with Yammer before um, Teams um, was presented to us. And we had a discussion about that. Now we have Teams, should we um, close down Yammer? We won't use it, we're a small company and so on. But now both of them are used equally so we have our teams with teamwork together and we have our Yama network where we are sharing ideas, knowledge, experiences, fun stuff, things like that. And it works pretty well. Well, so I have an observation, in my experience, I'm seeing that the more that we're seeing the integration, so mm -hmm. Yammer, the, 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 like I, so I have the Yammer app uh, in the left rail of, of teams and I use that yeah. as a jump in there. Uh, but when you have... Like, I love that when I'm, I've started a discussion on Yammer and it pushes it to Outlook or I can share things in with Teams um, and, and move things between those. Uh, it makes me more aware. It makes it so that I, it's more shareable, the ideas and the yeah. content. So if an idea that's broad, that's shared in Yammer, I can share it to a specific context of a project or a, an initiative that I'm working on over within Teams. I think that is helping drive, yeah, my personal yeah. experience, that's helping drive uh, the Yammer growth. A lot. And people who rely on notifications, they really love that the Yammer notifications show up in Teams as well, because then they can simply switch. And this also answers the which tool when. Use yep. Teams, integrate Yammer there, and you are good to go. Right. Agreed. It works really well. Uh, question number six. Uh, in your opinion, what are the primary gaps in the Microsoft 365 offerings and how are customers filling this gap? And just to, I'll just preface this by saying, when I asked this question out the, during the tweet jam, it went very quiet for, mm -hmm. for a couple minutes. Like people were nervous to criticize you know, in there. Yeah. It's like, no, oh, look, we, we all know that there are times where there are, there, there are gaps. I think the first person to answer, don't remember who it was, but said, Governance remains a gap. It's a, still a very manual process. Uh, I don't know that I want Microsoft attempting to define and solve all governance problems for me, um, but that was the first response back. So mm. any other obvious gaps that you're seeing? So, so what I see as a gap, and this is currently pretty true, is for me the management of different entry points. And I try to talk about that as nice as I can do. But if you're part of a lot of tenants and you are guests in a lot of environments, it's pretty hard 
to stay on track and also to communicate with people. I understand why this is the case, but I'm still hoping for a better solution. So let's yeah. say it that way. Well, I just, my my uh, my feelings on this yesterday, we were just talking about this offline uh, uh, with a coworker about how they've resolved it for the mobile app. Like I can, uh, so uh, same thing, I have, uh, I don't know how many guest networks I'm a member of. In fact, I just saw somebody gave advice of on a monthly basis, removing yourself from unused guest tenants. And I'm overdue. And I've done mm. that several times um, mm. that I'm no longer actively participating in. Um, but even the ones that I'm actively in that are part of my job, dozens of of these networks. But I also have three distinct logins which I use one of them at least once or twice a week, the other two daily mm. and logging out, logging back in again on the mobile device. I can have my three logins with all of the tenants with, with all of the guest networks and easily move in between those, you know, barring putting an emulator on my desktop and running the mobile app. You know, there, you can't do that, the desktop or the mobile versions. You have mm -hmm. to then have multiple tabs open. Well, the problem is, as you know, like somebody shares a file. Which one is that coming from? Did I save that mm -hmm. on my company tenant and my community tenant and this other customer tenant? Um, and which one am I logged into? And if you don't log out, and even if you're, you know, incognito within that, it it gets confused by that, and so you. I'm finding that I, every day, constantly having to log out, log back in to make sure I'm on the right version of Word or PowerPoint or you know whatever I'm I'm working on and saving to in OneDrive. Mm. They need to clean that up. <laughs> the yeah. multi tenant issue. Yeah, definitely. And on the other side, if you look at it from a an opportunity perspective. So like it was for us, so we looked at Office 365 or Microsoft 365 and all the gaps are opportunities for partners to build solutions. So like this is why Delegate happened because yeah. we found a gap within the product and said, okay, there is no solution for that, but we can build one. Um, and it's still a risk because you have a very strong competitor, which is Microsoft. Microsoft can build it by themselves and they can destroy your business model, voluntary or not voluntary. It just happens because customers expect Microsoft need to solve everything. Yeah. And this is not the case. And I see the gap scenario also um, as a great opportunity to bring new apps into the market and bring more value to customers. Uh, agreed. That's the, and I like that the phrasing too, of it's, it's not a problem. It's not a gap. It's an opportunity. It is. So, but it is. Yeah, it is. And, you know, one of the first questions that was asked when Teams was launched, as people saw the proliferation of Teams and had still the growth of the SharePoint sites underneath that with the existing SharePoint infrastructure. And the confusion, like, you know, where do I go and which is the right one and how is it attached and, mm -hmm. and all those things. And like AppPoint went and built the MyHub app, which is the number two most downloaded app in the Microsoft Store, a free app that's out there, but solves that, you know, the, it was the attempt to solve that. You know, where do yeah. I go? How do I navigate? If I'm part of dozens or some people claim hundreds, you know, that I know some people out there were quite, quite a bit, but to organize all of that, it, you know, it, the, again, it was an opportunity and companies stepped up to resolve that. So there are definitely opportunities out there and, and being in the Microsoft ecosystem, you always have to be aware that Microsoft might say, Hey, that's yeah. a fantastic idea. And that solves a problem. And then they go build the functionality. Yeah, migration and, and also migration is a great uh, example of that. Yeah, and also think about it. Um, Microsoft 365, it's not a product and it's not a service anymore. It's a platform you can build on it. So and and this is the opportunity you have here. And I think also Teams apps will be huge in the future. Agreed. And I think Microsoft is investing a lot of effort, certainly in the, yeah. in the channel around Teams as a platform and apps. Uh, you know, so yeah. that's 
that's a major investment. We'll yeah. we'll see with the next next fiscal year where it fits with the you know the the, the KPIs that they drive on their sales. But I have a, a you know a, a a good feeling that those will both be in play there again. Yeah. And then for the question seven, our final question here: uh, What three things could Microsoft do to help answer outstanding questions about which tool and when? So. I had an interesting conversation with a customer of mine who used to go to Microsoft Ignite. And he said, um, I like the virtual Ignite a lot. It brings me information about new products, about new services and so on that I can follow up. But what I'm really missing is the practical experience. So I only see product managers um, presenting new features but I, I do not find any use case for me and my company. I need an interaction with other people and so on. So currently Microsoft is moving pretty fast and I see also that some people, um, they're not doing Microsoft 365 the whole day and it's hard for them to follow up with the speed. And I think Microsoft also give people a time to adopt the things, to think about that, to find solutions around that and to use it. Otherwise, it's it's kind of a bumpy ride right now. That, that's been one of the you know, most common questions as an MVP that people would ask, ask me. Like, how is you as an MVP and an RD, how do you keep up with so much going mm -hmm. on? And the short answer is none of us do. Like, mm -hmm. we're relying on each other. There, mm -hmm. I have certain sources that I go to and from all of that, I mean, it was still things that slip through the, the gaps and I'll hear about something. When did that come out? It's like, well, that was like two months ago. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I missed that. And there almost needs to be, you know, a, 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 a cadence to the, the, to the release. I know that it's, I, I realize that it's a, a SaaS offering, it's a cloud offering. And so the, there are updates that are happening depending on the ring that you're on, but it's in real time. And so mm -hmm. every week there are new things, every single week without fail. Mm -hmm. uh, but there almost needs to be um, you know, kind of a cadence around that, like a, a, mm -hmm. a monthly cycle for that where, where they, they, they get added in or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the mm -hmm. answer. I'm just mm -hmm. talking out loud, but it's because mm -hmm. uh, that that's an issue. Yeah, and, and also currently I see a lot of organizations. I do a lot of business continuity services right now, mm -hmm. um, bringing the latest and relevant news to organizations for their tenants because they said, I, I can't keep up, but bring me a summary and filter out everything which is not relevant for me and my organization because you know us. And this is also interesting. And the other part is Microsoft is going very fast and very slow because they're promising a lot sometimes and not delivering fast enough. So it's kind of a double-sided medal sometimes. And I think this is, I can handle that, but it's still, when I get the questions, when is this happening? The, the never ending answer is soon. <laughs> I know. Well, so the most used word is soon. soon so soon. because we don't know. Well, it's it's um, I, and I know that there have long been. And I've provided. I've been very vocal in, in the uh, the community about uh, upgrading the um, uh, the roadmap site and the fact that Microsoft. I mean, we complained about it for years, and Microsoft went and built the roadmap site. Fantastic, but then they would. You know, there was no. Uh, um, uh, there's no history of, well, that did that date just change? You almost had to take a screenshot and then hold Microsoft to it and be like, well, look, yeah, you were saying March 31st. Now you're saying May 31st. Like, and mm. then there's no data. Like, why did that slip? What's going on? You know, but there was no alert, the things that are out there. And also, and so they've gotten much better at that. It's not mm -hmm. perfect, but then obviously things are dynamic. Things are changing daily, and Microsoft yeah. is looking at the data uh, and to, to understand the timing of these things. And they also want it to work when they put it out there live. So generally, if they find run into issues or you know they're they're in their testing and their earliest rings internally where they're releasing these features, they're catching 
problems that they didn't, you know, foresee, you know, mm-hmm. cross workload, you know, mm-hmm. you know, clashes kind of things. Um, but one of the things I've been saying for a long time, and I, and I'm, I know that they're continuing to work on the roadmap side is I would love it if it was a personalized roadmap view that would tell me what's mm-hmm. on my tenant. Mm-hmm. So I'm not having to go in because this was a question that came up in our office hours this this week, which we do every Monday at uh, mm-hmm. 8 a.m. Pacific. Um, but uh, where where somebody said, you know, hey, well, I understand that these, you know, the number of users in a, a live meeting, uh, you know, are are changing from 300 to 1,000. When do I know that the change has happened? And and so, like our our direction was, well, you go and look at the documentation on the Microsoft side. They won't change the documentation until it's GA. Once mm-hmm. it's GA, it's out there, or it'll say this is coming kind of thing. If it's just changed, it's there, it's updated. Yeah. But it would be great if I could go in there and look at on a daily or weekly basis the roadmap from my tenant's perspective to see what new features have now successfully yeah. added. Yeah. So. They, they can do that for selected services. So they are recognizing that, that they said, oh, we know you use that feature and you might be impacted, look at that, but they are not doing it for every feature. Yes, Yeah. would be a great filter. It's my a wish tenant. list, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a wish list, my it's, tenant. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it'll remain on my wish list. It's been there for three years. So, yeah. Well, Martina, really appreciate your time. Thanks for participating again in the Tweet Jam. And uh, they're always fun. I'm going to go back, if somebody else had commented, I'm going to go back through the tie graph stats on the last tab. Um, and if you go to link.tigraph.com slash collab talk, you can find that. Um, and the stats for, for past episodes as well. Um, but on the last tab is all of the tweets that used the collab talk hashtag during that one hour session. So you can go back in order and filter through and find out what all those comments that you missed. Um, I always mind that to, to find uh, you know, what other ideas, crazy or practical ideas that are out there that our fellow MVPs and experts shared. Uh, it's always a wealth of information. Yeah, and, and I think it's useful to just to think about some of the comments, why they are happening and, and what are the comments worth. Yeah, right. definitely. Let, again, never discount when somebody provides that feedback. It's better to understand their perspective, why they're mm-hmm. asking that. Why are they saying that? Like, we still don't know which tool to use when and get to the root of what that is. Is it an education issue? Is it that they're not using the right technology? Are they having other technical issues? Uh, you know, get to the root of that by understanding. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Well, thanks so much for your time and we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, and thanks for the opportunity. See you soon, hopefully in person. See you soon. <laughs>